want to deal with that guy and uh, it works out awesome. Otherwise, you know, I'll, I'll throw you a couple trade offers during the day and we'll see what happens from there. Well, hey, I, you know, I may be able to trade some other guys. Like I said, I've got some, uh, I've got some depth here, in, you know, in my infield that um, I just can't play every guy every day. Uh, it just, you know, I've got Dansby Swanson, uh, Josh Donaldson, who I think is still underperformed. I know you're not a big fan, but VR, Segura, uh, Devers, Listella. I, I just have a lot of guys, you know, that want to play the infield. So. <laughs> I like it, man. I, I think we can we can work something out. I'm sure we can, regardless of your side deal. I think we can work something else out. So, and don't forget, man. I'm in last place, and I do not see myself climbing out. I mean, I have a pretty solid pitching staff. Uh, I've got some solid bit players, but I don't have a complete team by any means. And I knew that wasn't going to happen. Um, so, you know, even if you look at something that says, Hey, you know, I want this guy, I know I don't have the value to give you back, but, um, you know, I'll, I'll swap, uh, I'll give you my seventh for your ninth round pick. You know, I mean, we can work something out, brother. We can make it happen. So sure, sure. I'm looking at next year, already looking at next year. So it's all yeah, I mean, the other, the other concept that I have to dig deeper into is just take a look at some of these totals and, and really, um, you know, evaluate, I might've won some of these, you know, I might be five, one and one, but I might've gone against some soft matchups. Like uh, I'm looking at it right now. My, uh, my home runs are second worst in the league. So um, improving on that Max Kepler position is, is probably going to be imperative. So. Yeah. And then Chris Bryant will do that for you. So yeah, I highly think if you can get Chris Bryant off the guy, go for it. Yeah. I might go Chris Bryant and, uh, like a Tyler Molly for Verlander and Max Kepler or, mm-hmm. you know, something like that. So Fantastic. bump up, to, well, you bump know, up this, to uh, if I need to, cause I, I, I don't think that he's going to maintain the same type of home run pace that he had at the beginning. And I think I've talked about that before. It just, yeah, but his stats still look good right now for a trade. If people yeah, are just evaluating absolutely. it and don't realize when that, those numbers came, it could be some nice value. So, yeah, Absolutely. So, anyways, well, uh, let me confirm one thing. This train hopper from Witch's Hat Brewing Company, our number one selling brand, is tasting delicious from our friends here at Lake Street Tavern in downtown South Lyon, one of our top five accounts uh, right down the street from us, a big supporter from day one. They've been open 10 years and um, going strong. Uh, we're also uh, the DFS Hangover Show by Draft for Upside. We are broadcasting live at Lenny Melnick Fantasy Sports.com on the Legend Sports Network. Catch shows here Monday through Friday, pretty much all day, all night. Uh, there's some great Saturday content. Uh, not much going on Sunday, uh, but that will change as uh, football season gets going at us. Uh, you got the Lenny Melnick's um, L- uh, Lenny's Daily Podcast pretty much Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 10. On Mondays, you've got us as the next show at 11. you got Pitches Got Stitches at 1 o'clock. Yeah, Drop the Mic with Mike Eccleston at 3. Money One is Twice as Nice with Cam every uh, Monday through Friday at 5.30. Roto Imbeciles with George tonight at 7. Andy and that guy at 8. Sports Buffet with Ron and Lou at 9. And Dan at 11 o'clock. Still don't know what Dan is. Uh, I, I'm asleep by 11 p.m. every night, and it just says on the calendar, Dan, 11 to midnight. I like that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I like it. So, anyways, all right. Now the station identification's out of the way. Um, you have been uh, so I have played DFS for years. Uh, can I can I say I've been making money? No. Can I say I've been basically breaking even, uh, maybe losing a couple bucks, but being entertained? Absolutely. Uh, as I'm still playing, I haven't lost a chunk because if I lost a bunch of money, I would not still be playing. But uh, you've been helping me a little bit, um, and and it's been kind of fun. A lot of times my gut kind of lines up with some of the plays you're going, but uh, obviously you see things I don't because you are a man of the advanced metrics. So let's take a peek at um, maybe a couple of the sites that uh, you go to. If they're free, awesome. Even better. If they're subscription, that's fine too. But let's take a couple of looks at the sites that you use to pull up uh, information to sort and and look at to get your DFS lineup set up. And let's apply that to uh, tonight's main slate on DraftKings on uh, the DFS and take a look at, um, you know, what metrics you're using and uh, how you are reading these. Because I can look at all these things and um, I, I glean a little bit off of it, but I don't look at it enough to really know how to use them. So walk me through it. So you just posted in our chat room, which is live at all times during these shows at LennyMelnickFantasySports.com slash live. If you go there, click on the Listen Chat Live button, you'll see the chat room, you'll see the schedule for the week, you'll see the link to listen to us live, you can interact with us, it's all there, it's a wonderful tool. Uh, you can register for free for the site. Uh, so you have posted a Fangraphs link um, 
that allows you to sort through pitching data, I do believe. So I'm going to click on that and see where it takes us. Yeah, so that link right there is going to give you a table of pitchers for today's date, um, which is 520. However, if you go into the URL and you change that uh, at the very end almost, it says 5-20. You change that to the month and date that you want, uh, so you can change that every single day. Um, it's going to pull up the pictures for that particular day. Um, one of the things that sometimes you do have to uh, sort out data-wise is some of these pictures that might have four or five innings and you're not really interested in. Um, you can do that up at the top, and you can do that on minimum innings pitched. You can also take a split of these pictures earlier. This is going to be a full season, but you can change them to uh, 30 or 14 days if that's what you want to do. Seven days is kind of insignificant in terms of data. Um, but this is going to give you a lot of data in terms of what you can look at to kind of understand our pitchers being lucky or our pitchers actually, you know, being unlucky or are they All just right, good? So first, real quick, you just gave us that information that you can sort through and look at for you, for our event tonight. Um, what are you changing those settings to at the top or are you leaving them as is how you put the link in? I'm leaving them as is. All right. Great. Continue, okay. sir. Yeah, so you're going to get not only their ERA. So let's talk about the first tab. You've got your ERA, and then you've got your BABIP, your FIP, XFIP, and Sierra. So XFIP and Sierra are going to take into a lot of factors um, that ERA obviously is not. Um, how hard the ball was hit, a couple different aspects there. So they're a better indication of the actual skill of the pitcher or how they've been executing their pitches. And then you can correlate that over with their ERA and see if a guy's you know, Sierra and XFIP are one, on one side of the the number equation and their ERA is somewhere else. Are they either being unlucky or are they getting lucky, one or the other? Plus... All right, so let's take a quick look here and look at the very top name on this list, Mike Soroka from the Braves, who's pitched 36.2 innings with an ERA under one. So tell us what these numbers mean uh, for Mike Soroka and where you think that ERA and his value is going to go based on these other numbers. Um, well, I don't think he's he's pitched bad. I mean, the, an ERA under one is is a kind of a noisy stat. I think everybody can agree with that. Um, he hasn't pitched bad. You'd like to see it a little bit a little bit better um, in terms of being lucky. But um, I tried to sort it. Okay, there we go. Um, so a two thirty Babbitt. You know, he's getting lucky there. Uh, his XFIPs at 395 by no means is that the lowest on the slate. And then his Sierra is at a 4.12. By no means is it the lowest on the slate. So, you know, a, a guy like Soroka, if he was in a tough matchup, I probably would lean away from or lean away from him and, and kind of fade him. But, you know, he's in Oracle playing against San Francisco. And, you know, his numbers aren't bad. They're just probably not as good as his ERA would indicate. Um, if you search it by ERA and sort it and you see him out the, down there at the bottom for some reason like I said sometimes some of these guys like Luke Miley from the Blue Jays because he was a positional player that pitched um, sneaks in here uh, but right above him is Chris Paddock and Chris Paddock is a guy that you know while his XFIP and Sierra are, are really good you look at that Babbitt number of one point or point one seven nine, and you have to believe that he's going to regress uh, more towards 300 and that's going to affect some of these other numbers here makes it kind of difficult for me to kind of assess where, where to go with him. But uh, given the matchup that Soroka has, I, I'm, I'm very interested in him tonight. Fantastic. So um, looking through these numbers here, so we've, we've said Paddock and Soroka are both uh, getting kind of lucky and are going to come back to the norm. So you're a little nervous about deploying them in, in certain situations. Find me somebody here that... Um, is kind of uh, the opposite end, where their numbers aren't super fantastic, but they're getting incredibly unlucky on the other end, and they could come back into play for you. Um, well, one guy that I'm interested in today, and his XFIP and Sierra are both very, very good. His, uh, his ERA is not terrible, but it's kind of middle of the pack when you're looking at these guys on this slate would be Luke Weaver. I like Luke Weaver's matchup. I think Luke Weaver has a... A uh, good price tag on him today, and he has a tremendous amount of upside because he's shown that he can, you know, strike out quite a few guys, but also get deeper into the games. Um, you have to look at some of the other things that he has. One of the nice things about Luke Weaver, if you go over to the middle of the table, a 5.7 uh, base on ball percentage. You know, these guys that walk a lot of guys, um, 
when you walk a lot of guys, those solo home runs turn into two and three run bombs. So, you know, you mean like Hugh Darvish is a 17.2% walk rate. God, it's disgusting. That, that's an epic uh, yeah. number, my friend, an epic number. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, you, you're, that, that's one in six guys being walked. <laughs> so, so it's not just that when you bring up Hugh Darvish and, and he's a guy that I kind of do want to attack today, not just because of that walk rate, um, but you, you look at who D, who Darvish is going to play and what kind of percentage they induce walks at. Um, so I think in his last start, he only had a couple walks. He actually had a really good start. I can't remember against who it was, but um, wasn't a it wasn't a tough matchup, I don't think. And you know he's going against the Phillies today. Um, McCutcheon, sixteen percent walks on the year. Harper, eighteen and a half. Hoskins, fourteen and a half. Uh, you know, their lowest walking guy is Segura at 5.4, Romuto at 7.5. I mean, these are high walk numbers uh, for for the hitters to induce. So, you know, I think Darvish can get into a lot of trouble tonight. And I know that a guy like uh, Abdubal Herrera is extremely inexpensive on, uh, on DraftKings tonight. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to take notes here, so sorry if I'm pausing here. I'm trying to. I haven't played since uh, Wednesday night because I've just been working uh, all weekend, starting Thursday night. So I, I'm a little rusty on the building lineup. So I'm taking some notes here. So yes, yeah, definitely I mean, a target, a Hugh Jarvis for sure. Yeah. So yesterday was interesting. I don't know if you last cleaned through the stats, but you had two guys in Bieber and Alcantara, who we just dropped. Um, <laughs> You know, who are both, uh, they were both over 20%, and they both had gems. Uh, Bieber had like a 54 point outing, like 15 Ks, complete game shutout. Alcantara had a 35 point outing. So you're basically getting 80 or 90 points from your uh, your pitchers. And if you didn't have those pitchers, um, yeah, it didn't matter. So that was fun. Right. That always you, know that these, you know that these pitchers are going to pitch gems the minute we drop them, right? We're going to drop Marge Vicious tomorrow, and he's probably going to get brought back up in three weeks and pitch three complete games. Well, look, he, here is what I told you about Alec Contera is that I didn't need to start him every time that he, he was going out. Um, but if he was going to face a small amount of lefties, which, you know, typically the, the Mets lineup is going to be, you know, Littered with lefties up and down, but with Conforto on the concussion protocol, they only they only brought three of them out. Um, so, you know that 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 offers some upside there, and so that brings us to another thing: the the Mets are a lineup that can strike out quite a bit. Chris Paddock had his way with them at one point. Um, Alec Contreras had his way with them yesterday. Who is facing the Mets today? I haven't looked. I'm trying to pull up a DraftKings match right now, so I can. Uh... It is the Washington Nationals, and the top pitcher on the slate, justifiably, is going to be Patrick Corbin. Um, so, so looking at Corbin, um, let me let me break it, it down on my own end here. So he's got a 2.91 ERA, which is excellent. But going across and looking at his BABIP, uh, 262, which seems like a good number. Um, the FIP at 310, the XFIP at 355, the Serie at 351. So he kind of seems like he's pitching exactly how he should be. Yeah, not only that, but if we went back and we talk about the lefties being a, a strength on the Mets, you know, you got McNeil, Cano, uh, Nimmo, who strikes out just a ton. Uh, Corbin's striking out lefties at 40%. Now, you're not going to find that here on this uh, fan graphs thing. This is, I'm going to use something over in Roto Grinders, the plate IQ. Um, and it shows me the kind of the split breakdown. You can find it in fan graphs. It's just a lot of these numbers are, are put into a nice little spot on the Roto Grinders plate IQ. This gives me some, some other stuff here. So I, I use both of them, but Corbin's striking out lefties at a 40% clip. Beautiful. Probably unsustainable, uh, but still, I mean, when you look at these guys. But the Mets uh, McNeil, do strike out, so that's a nice nice correlation there. Well, and he's striking out righties at a 25% clip, too. So it's not like mm-hmm. he's shabby. His ISO allowed to both sides of the plate so far this year, uh, 111 and 133 from lefty and righty, respectively. And when you look at the Mets, 16, 24, 34, 39, 14, 29 and a half, 32 and a half, uh, 40. Those are the strikeout rates on the projected lineup. Um, whether you're playing cash, whether you're playing tournaments, I think it, it would behoove you to find a way 
to get uh, Corbin in your lineup. Uh, I think 